This will be a quick one, hopefully. Render engines is the topic that bothers many of you. Which one is better? Which one is faster? Which one is the most realistic one? Let's try to understand the factors that makes the difference and if they matter as much. Nowadays, there are only three factors that are important, at least for me. Because let's be honest, you can achieve realistic results in any render engine. Your understanding of how things work matter, not engines. Engines won't do your work for you. So what are those important factors? Speed, is engine biased or unbiased? And which resources does it utilize to render, GPU or CPU? I will try to explain the differences of these factors as simple as I can. Let's take two popular engines, Octane and V-Ray. They are very different on many different levels. I use both for commercial work, both in Maya and Cinema 4D. I used others too, but these two, as I already mentioned, are really different. V-Ray is biased. A CPU render engine, it can utilize GPUs too, by the way. Octane is unbiased, GPU render engine. What the hell is biased, unbiased stuff? In a nutshell, biased is untrue and unbiased is true, making Octane physically correct engine and V-Ray a cheat engine. It's a very, very deep and complex topic, but I'll tell you what. Everything we're doing as VFX or CG or motion graphic designers is not true. It's not real. So it's biased anyway, at some extent. So any image, photo, video is generated by light, right? CG and VFX scenes are generated, rendered by digital rays being bounced, reflected, uh, absorbed in your digital scene. So unbiased rendering allows your light rays to be realistically calculated, like if it would bounce out of surfaces in real life. That's true, but in Octane we have features like adaptive sampling when the engine will favor rays that are more likely to be in the most important parts of the scene. We have settings that allows us to clamp the rays and speed up renders. That's all cheating and that came from biased rendering. Octane have very few settings and gives realistic results straight away, which is amazing and I love it. Results you can get from V-Ray are realistic too, but it has so many settings that many users are literally afraid of it. These settings are what I call backend settings. V-Ray is extremely flexible and controllable. Does it make it biased if you can get realistic results from it too? For me personally, when I say I love Octane because it's unbiased, I mean I love Octane because of its simplicity. Because for me, every engine is biased. It's all not true. It's Matrix. I stopped using V-Ray because it just takes too much time to set up stuff that I don't really want to or, or need to think about. Octane is making those choices for me, leaving me with more time spent on creativity rather than messing with technical side of a project. Let's talk about render speeds. The hardware used by render engines have direct influence on the speeds. Of course. Over last years, GPU rendering became more popular, and it makes sense. GPUs give more power for the price. Octane is claimed to be up to 50 times faster than traditional render engines, and I have no reasons not to believe this statement, but there are a lot of buts. V-Ray, for instance, is an industry standard in many industries, and there is a reason behind that. It's flexible, it's reliable, and it can handle any complexity that you would want to throw at it. So with render forms, it's a beast of an engine. As well as Octane is, I've run several machines at once myself and render speeds are impressive. But with Octane, you're limited with your GPU's video memory. It means that you can uh, detail your scene to a certain limit. If you will overload it with uh, geometry or textures, it just won't render anything. This is the reason why, for example, architecture 
is still rendered with V-Ray or other engines. Octane just can't handle the amount of geometry needed for outdoor visualizations. It doesn't mean you can't render big stuff uh, with Octane though. It just means you have to be clever with optimization. Last year, for instance, I rendered a big living area with 41 houses, trees, planting beds, people, and those, all those small details. And I remember that uh, the guys that used to do renders for that client previously, they were running V-Ray, 3D Max, all classic stuff. And when they found out, found out that I'm using uh, Cinema 4D and Octane, they were like, good luck, it's not possible. Well, apparently it is. It was painful, but doable. With all that being said, let's consider speed as a whole workflow from texturing and lighting to final render. V-Ray is quite complex comparing to Octane because V-Ray exposes all backend uh, settings to user and user have to know exactly what all those hundred settings are doing, what they are affecting and so on. Octane as a physically correct engine sorts all those backend questions itself. For me personally, this is a huge time saver. So apart from fast render times, I will save ton of time on setting up this scene and in overall, I will spend less time on a project. When Arnold came out, there were a lot of debates on its speed. A lot of users shouted that it's beating V-Ray in terms of speed. But in reality, it was slower than V-Ray. But it has a lot less settings to mess with. And that, in overall, saved users a lot of time. I used Octane and V-Ray as example, but it doesn't make them the best for what you're doing. The best render engine for you is the one that suits your needs the most. When I started, I didn't even think about render engines. I just used whatever my software had as a standard render engine. Cinema's 4D uh, physical render engine is awesome. Houdini's mantra is incredible. Other 3D softwares have built-in engines and you can achieve realistic results in all of them as long as you know how to use it and how everything works. The logical questions you might have is if Octane is so limiting with complex scenes, why do I use it? I use Octane because uh, I do VFX and VFX most of the time is a combination of a live shot and CG elements. It means that a lot of times I don't have those enormous calculations that are needed, for example, in architectural visualization, where all elements are CG and they need to interact to each other. Even if the scene gets complex and big, I can render elements separately and then merge them on compositing stage. Octane is blazing fast, it's live preview, it's linear performance scalability and it's cost effective. To summarize guys, think about it that way. It doesn't matter what you're driving, Audi or BMW. They both do same thing, taking you from point A to point B. Same with render engine. Driver is the one who matters. I hope I clarified something for you today, guys. If so, thumbs up. See you in the next one. <laughs>